Hello, Math 140 students. We are going to pick up on page 25, section 2.7, review of percents and formulas to solve geometry. Remember that a percent is a ratio representing some part out of 100. So for this warm up, we want to write each decimal, or sorry, we want to write each percent as a decimal and as a fraction in simplest form. So if I have a 10.5% well, since I know that every percent is out of 100, I can do the division. So on my calculator, I would have my fraction. And in the numerator, I have a 10.5. And in the denominator, I will have a 100. So that is going to give me a 0 0.105. And that is going to represent my decimal. Okay. So I've definitely done the decimal, but it also wants it as a fraction in simplest forms. So to write it as a fraction, well, if I have this already as a decimal, then I go to my math button on my calculator. See how it's shaded on that fraction, that number one. So press enter, press enter again, and it turns it into a fraction that is in simplest form. So that would be 21 over 200. So we are going to do the exact same thing with number two. So if I have a 30 and 1 fourth percent, well, I know that 1 fourth is really a 0.25, right? One quarter is, is 25 cents. So I have 30.25, and remember that's still a percent. So I'm gonna have my 30.25 percent out of my 100. So on my calculator, I have a 30.25 and my denominator of 100 to give me 0 0.3025. And that's going to represent the decimal. Now, to give you the fraction, I'm going to use my calculator, and now I'm going to go to my math, press enter, enter again, and I get that fraction of 121 over 400. And that is your fraction in simplest form. For number three, this warm up, it says what percent of 72 is 63? So I know the is is going to represent my equals. So it's equal to 63. And it says what percent? I don't know what that percent is, so let's call it x, okay? So the percent here is going to be representing my x. And I'll know that that word of tells me to multiply. Now I'm going to multiply that number 72. So I really have 72x is equal to 63. So I'm going to divide both sides by 72. So that 63 divided by 72 gives me a 0.875. So x is equal to a 0.875. Since I specifically want a percent, then that's a decimal, so I have to move that over. So I'll have an 87.5% as my final answer. 
For number four, it reads, Gina treated her parents to dinner at her favorite restaurant. The bill was $74.25. Gina wants to leave a 16% of the total bill as a tip. How much should the tip be? So what you do is you are going to multiply. So it specifically says that she has 16%. The up here tells you that you are going to multiply and it says you're going to multiply it as the total bill. So that total bill is 74.25. That is going to represent your total tip. So that 16% as a decimal would be 8.16. It's being multiplied by 74.25. And all of that is going to equal to your tip amount. So on my calculator, I'm going to have a 0.16 times 74.25. And so I get $11.88 as my tip. So that is how much the tip should be when Gina treats her parents to dinner. Now let's talk about the area of a triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. The height goes up and down and the base goes left to right. So for example, it says the area of a triangular painting is 126 square inches. The base is 18 inches. What is the height? So here, let's go ahead and draw a triangle. And we know the height goes straight up and down. And the height is the unknown. So I don't know how much my height is going to be. But I know that the base is 18 inches. And I know the total area is 126. So from, from my formula, I have that area is equal to a one-half base times height. So the area I know is 126, the one-half, my base is 18, and the height I'm trying to figure out. So I have 126 is equal to one-half times 18. You think of it as eight, half of 18 and that's going to give me 9. So I divide both sides by my 9. And that's going to give me 14. So 14 is equal to my h. So the height must be 14 inches. We also talk about the sum of the angles in a triangle. So all of the angles inside must add up to 180, okay? So all of these insides are gonna add up and they're gonna add up to 180. Um, also a right triangle, we know that one side is equal to, or one, one angle is 90 degrees in order for it to be a right triangle. For example, it says the measure of one angle of a right triangle. So I definitely know I have a right triangle. Um, so the measure of one angle of a right triangle is 40 degrees more than the measure of the smallest angle. Find the measures of all three angles. So if I have my right triangle, then that means that I have a 90 degree angle. That's what it means for it to be a right. So it says that one of the angles is 40 degrees more than the measure of the smallest. So the smallest, I don't know what that is, so let's call that x. But I know that the other one is 40 degrees more than that. So more is gonna tell me to add 
So I'm going to have this as 40 plus x. And I already know that that little square represents 90. So when I add all of them together, I have 40 plus x is one angle. And I'm going to add to it my other angle. And I also have that 90 degrees. And when I add all of the angles together in a, tri in a triangle, it should equal to 180. So now I have 2x plus 40 plus 90 is 130. So let's subtract 130 from both sides. So that 180 minus 130 gives me 50. And I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides so that half of 50 is equal to 25. So that represents the smallest angle. So the smallest angle is 25 degrees. And I know since I have a right triangle, I have also a 90 degree angle. And I also have my other one, which was 40 plus x. And remember, x represented 25. So 40 plus 25 gives me 65. So I have 25 degrees, 90 degrees, and 65 degrees are going to be the measure of all of these three triangles. We also have the Pythagoras theorem. That has to do with a right triangle. If we do not have a right triangle, then we cannot use the Pythagoras theorem. So it specifically says, the Pythagoras theorem tells how the lengths of the three sides of a right triangle relate to each other. In any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the length of the two legs equal the square of the length of the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always directly across from that 90 degrees. So, for example, we want to use the Pythagoras theorem to find the missing side. Well, I know directly across from that 90 degrees that that 12 represents my hypotenuse. So, I have leg squared plus my leg squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared. So the first leg, let's call that 8. My second leg here, I have y. And my hypotenuse, I have that as a 12. So now I have 8 squared. So 8 times 8 is 64. I have my y squared is equal to my 12 squared. 12 times 12 is 144. So I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides. So 144 minus 64 gives me 80. So now you want to find the square root of 80. Well, since I have a square, the only way to undo that square is by square rooting it. So that y is equal to the square root of 80. And on my calculator, if I am looking for the square root of 80, then I'm going to go to second, and I have my square root of 80. So here is my decimal approximation. And usually you wanna, wanna, might want to round it off to your tenths place. So that would be 8.9. So you're rounding it to an 8.9. And that'll give you your missing value. Now we have some practice problems. So this is where you guys are going to press pause and work out these problems 
And then once you're done working out these problems, then replay, continue playing the video. So go ahead and press pause. So for your practice problem, for number one, you should get the square root of 204, or better yet, about 14.3 as a decimal approximation. For number two, we're finding the length and the width. The width is 14 centimeters, and, and the length is 34 centimeters. For number three, I'm looking for all three sides. The first side is five inches, the second side is 12 inches, and that third side is 11 inches. And that is the end of section 2.7.